What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV. You might remember when I brought Mike Marino on before we talked about the ABs, the people that he was around. We got into the situation with Cadillac, whether or not he had a knife on him. There's been so much stuff out there on social media, out there on YouTube. Everybody's interested in this issue, but we got to talk to one of the dudes that was around back then. And we're going to talk to him about some of that stuff today. Some people have heard about Fly. You've seen these videos. People are sending them to me. So, Mike, we're going to bring you on. We're going to talk about some of that stuff. Tell the people who you are, Mike. I know you got your own channel. You're just starting out. We're going to get you some subscribe subscribers over there. Get that thing jumping. Tell the people about you. Okay. My name is Mike Marino, and the name of my channel is Felons Talk. It's been out about two months now. Um, I got about 500 subscribers so far. And uh, I've been interviewing uh, John Greshner from the Aryan Brotherhood. He's been down for 56 years. He's up in Colorado State Prison right now. They, uh, they took him out of the Fed system and put him in Colorado. And uh, the other day, uh, they took me off his phone list. So uh, that's why I haven't been putting out too many uh, videos lately. But I will be putting another one up today. And... Uh, going forward without John. Hopefully I'll get him back on the phone list and we'll be able to hear from him again. But if not, uh, we still have other uh, material that we can do and uh, other uh, people that we can interview. In fact, tomorrow I'm going to be inter uh, interviewing uh, John's cell partner. Uh, he's on an ankle monitor right now. He's in Denver, Colorado. He just got out. So we're going to hear from him tomorrow. and. Uh, and that's about it. Yeah. Let's talk about this, Mike. I'll put your links up so people can, you know, check you out. Tell the people how much time you did, Mike. I did uh, about 29 years, four months, and 10 days, to be exact, from May 5th, 1974 till September 15th of 2003. Around people like Barry Mills, guys like that, right? Absolutely, yeah. I think I asked you before, what was Barry like? Barry was kind of, um, he wanted you to know who he was. He let you know that he, by his, he, the things he said and the way he behaved, he wanted you to know who he was. Of course, I'd heard him from Mike Bartosh before he ever get, got to Atlanta. Uh, Mike Bartosh uh, worked with me in the, uh, in the laundry and uh, one day, you know, we were friends, we were chopping it up and he was looking real sad and everything. And I said, what's wrong, bro? And he said, well, uh, Barry's coming to Atlanta. I said, Barry, your friend, Barry, Barry Mills? Because at this point, I still didn't know that much about the Aaron Brotherhood, right? And he said, yeah, yeah, Barry Mills, man. Uh, he's the head of the Aryan Brotherhood. And uh He's coming here. So I said, well, that's your friend, man. Why, why so glum, man? Why aren't you happy about that? He said, well, Barry wants me to make me a brother. He wants to bring me in and get me made, uh, so to speak, to make me a member of the brotherhood. And in order to do that, he's going to take me on a murder with it. I said, well, what do you mean? Is, is there somebody he's going to kill? And he, and he said, no, Barry has promised to kill one inmate in every prison that he goes to. This, he's, a, he's planting his flag, man. This is Barry Mills. So, uh, you know. Uh, ask you this. Let me ask you this. When you were around Barry, was he always serious? Were there times when he was joking, playing, where you're just like, man, it's a normal dude. But he has this other side. When it's time for business, he handles it. Yeah, he was joking and playing and all that. But he was also somebody that you knew was very serious you, you took him serious anyway he's a big guy you know and uh i remember somebody saying something about a dude uh in regards to uh yeah that guy might have a knife man and uh you know and barry stepped right up and he said well if he does i got a bigger knife i mean he wanted you to know who he was man like he was the guy you know, he wasn't this. afraid of nobody. He was the killer. He was the bitch. Let's get to this kind of elephant in the room. Like all these I'm, people, I'm, have, you know, there's a big thing. Like after me and you did the interview, you know, there was numerous comments where people were like, oh, man, Cadillac was handcuffed. 
you know, there, there, we'll talk about that. There's this, these videos out there with the dude fly where he's saying, man, he whooped, I think he whooped Tommy Silverstein. He whooped Willie Bobo. He whipped some of the biggest, baddest Mexican mafia dudes in prison. Have you seen any of them videos? I actually did see it the other day, man. He was saying that he was in, um, McNeil Island. McNeil Island used to be a federal prison. It's not anymore. They sold it back to the state of Washington. Uh, it's a Washington state prison now. And uh, he claimed that he came in there and he wanted some drugs. So he got a knife and he said, who's got the drugs? And somebody said, well, the Mexican mafia has the drugs. So he said, where are they at? And he pointed at this 12 man cell. I mean, I don't know how they had bigger cells. They had 10 man cells in them days, you know, in some of the older prisons. Right. He claims he went in there with a knife, made them all strip. Right. Give up all the, made them strip and give up all their drugs. Really? He did that all by himself. OK. So anyway. <laughs> anyway, the next day he he said, Willie, was it Willie? Bo, not Willie Bobo, but. Gabby, Gabby, Gabby's another guy. He's on a on a level of a Willie Bobo, right? He said Gabby wanted to know who it was that robbed his people, so he came up and said, "Well, I'm the guy that robbed your people." He said uh, everybody was there. Gabby, uh, uh, Barry Mills was there. He said uh, Ronnie Bruschino. You know who he is, right? Ronnie Bruschino. The bruisers, they call them bruisers. I mean, all these heavyweights were there, and uh, nothing happened. <laughs> he said nothing happened, right? Anyway, then he got transferred out of there, and he went somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know his whole story, but I was just listening to that, and then he was talking about he was in holdover some in, in, in Kansas City, in a holdover uh, with uh, – um, Tommy Silverstein. And he said, Tommy Silverstein came to him and said, I heard you're a boxer. And he said, I like to box too. And uh, he said, well, him and Tommy got to sparring and he beat Tommy up. <laughs> oh, man, right. You know how big Tommy is, man? I mean, he's a big dude, right? Uh, anyway, uh, Tommy used to slap people, man. Like, he was a, Tommy was a bully, you know? He was a fucking bully, man. Uh I find that. This. Let me ask but, you this. Let me stop you for a minute because you were, I mean, you were around this guy, Fly, right? You were in same prisons here and there with him oh, over the years. Yeah, I was in the same prisons, but I vaguely remember this dude. I don't like, I don't know him, no. You know what I mean? I just, I just, I mean, I heard his name and I've heard him, I might have heard him yelling down a tear at it sometimes. So I didn't really hang out with him. Washington, D.C. people, you know what I mean? So I wouldn't really know that much about him personally, you know. Uh, ask you this, though. Let me ask you this. I mean, what? I mean, you remember him. What was he known as? Was he known as a tough guy, a guy that was full of shit? I mean, how, how was he known? Yeah, he was known as, a, you know, like a guy who talked loud and, 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 and shit like that, you know, who, who boasted and, uh, and all that shit, you know. But I never seen him get get busy with anybody, you know. I, I mean, so I don't know, you know what do you. But I kind of just my my thing is like he just said he beat up Clay Fountain. Clay Fountain has killed what four people, right? He killed. He beat up Tommy Silverstein, and then he's like, oh, he just made up so many. He beat up so. He according to him, he ran every prison he was ever in, you know. And, ask you this. Uh, if he walks up to Gabby, he walks up to Barry Mills, starts talking about, hey, man, yeah, I'm that dude. I robbed your people. If the you know, if the robbery even happened, which I don't think it did. But what do you think would have happened? I mean, from your perspective, you were in prison with these dudes. You were around them. And so people know, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about this. You actually was you were actually convicted of killing someone in prison. You, you, yeah. you killed someone in prison. Um, I know it's a sore <laughs> subject for you, but we'll talk about we'll talk about that briefly. But what do you think? would have happened had he done that to Barry Mills and Gabby? I think they'd have got busy with him right there. I think that's what would have happened. I don't think it would have went no further. And if it, and if, it, and if they rocked him to sleep, if they made it like, if they played it like, well, okay, it's, it's okay. We're not going to do anything. That would have been the, that would have been like, that would have been the next move to be in, you know, 
tomorrow we're, you know, cutting his head off. You know what I mean? Like, just get him to, like, relive, you know, relax and let his guard down. They'll, you know, call him rocking him to sleep. They would have rocked him or they would have hit him right there, one of the two, you know? Actually, Barry, Puppet, and Mike ended up stabbing somebody there in, in, in McNeil Island. And uh, yeah, Barry, Puppet McKinney, and, and, and Mike Bartok. And they all ended up getting transferred out of there for a stabbing. They didn't kill the guy, but they, they were involved in the stabbing. So do I think they would have let it go with the gabs being there too? I seriously doubt it, man. Uh, it just doesn't sound correct to me. You know, it just, it sounds ridiculous, you know. But hey, that's his story. He's sticking to it, you know. I really don't, I, like I say, it's not my business. I just, uh, I'm just a, 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 a spectator like everybody else on YouTube, you know. I make my content and uh, I keep it pushing, you know. Let me ask you this, right? You were also around Cadillac and, and all of that stuff, and he kind of had a reputation for, for, for taking ass, right? I mean. Yeah. Cadillac Smith, man. Okay. I drove up in Lewisburg, 76, right? They brought this little Jewish kid in, about a 23-year-old kid, right? He uh, had a three-year sentence. He was designated for the camp, which is outside the walls. You know what a camp is. For those of you who are watching, a camp is don't have no fences or nothing. They might have a little unicorn out there. There's a pig farm where they work. They can walk away anytime they want, you know. There's no security. The kid had a three-year sentence, nonviolent crime, uh, first offender. He was supposed to go to the camp. But the way they play it is they bring him in the walls, and it takes him, like the C&P office takes him about two to three weeks to, to get the papers uh, in order, and then they call him down to RMD and they say, "Okay, you're being released to the camp," and they just send him over to the camp, which is right next door to the, the main prison. And that's how they used to do things: uh, two to three weeks, and that's it. Well, this kid was on D two, single cell, and some black dude came in and tried to rape him. He runs downstairs and tells the white guys downstairs what had happened. And they decide they're going to go up and put the dude in check. It's a black dude from New York. He's a Muslim, right? So they, uh, they get posseed up, and they go upstairs. There's a guy that didn't get the, the memo. Uh, his name was Cato. He was going up with them, too. It was like five or six of them. Cato hauls off and stabs this guy, right? He doesn't, he doesn't, like that wasn't what's supposed to happen. I don't know if I told you this before the story. He stabbed the guy. The guy didn't die. Everybody ran because they weren't expecting this. This wasn't the, you know, this wasn't what was supposed to happen. They were going to go up and say, listen, if you want to rape somebody, rape a black guy. Don't rape one of ours. That's what they wanted to do. And that, uh, and this kid, Cato, he blew that up. He just pulled off and stabbed this dude. So everybody ran. The black dude goes down to the cops, says, I've been stabbed. They take him to the infirmary, and he, he tells them, Cato uh, stabbed me. <laughs> and they roll up Cato, take him to the hole. Eventually, they uh, charge Cato, and the black dude testifies against him. All right? But this is down the tier. This is like, this is months later. In the interim, they, uh, you know, uh, the kid goes back to his cell and everything is okay. And Friday night, they have movies over the, they have like a movie theater over the uh, mess hall, regular movie theater, just like you got on the streets. Different, uh, the only difference is uh, the seats ain't as comfortable, you know, they don't have cushions on. And so everybody's coming back from the, uh, the uh, movies on a Friday night. He's getting ready to go up to the second floor on D block. And there's a big commotion. And I can hear it. <laughs> What's going on? And here he comes 
His body comes rolling down the steps. He's got a knife sticking out of his back. He's dead. The Jewish kid. Uh, his father's a big rabbi in Philadelphia. So they got to call his father. Kid's only been there a week. He's dead. How does he die? He gets murdered. How did that happen? We don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, after that, they stop stopped you for a minute. Him. Let me stop you because prison is a place where a lot of people talk. You say you don't know how he died, but I'm sure there was rumors up throughout the jail. And I'm not saying that I'm saying, no, I know how he died. He got stabbed to death. You know, Who stabbed him? That's my question. Some black dudes from D.C. I remember who they were, but I remember their nicknames, but I'm not going to say them because I could be wrong. But they were indicted. They wanted to, to indict Cadillac Smith. They wanted to. But for some reason, they couldn't. Uh, they were Cadillac. indicted. Listen, they were indicted. So what were their names? It don't matter. I mean, this is 30, 40 I years one of them, I think one of them was Wiggins. I think one of them's name was Wiggins Bay. And uh, I don't remember the other kid's name. I'm not sure. I don't want to. I, I don't want to say the wrong name and get the wrong guy, you know. But uh, they were. They were. I, I believe they got convicted on that or something. Um, not not a hundred percent sure of that either. But I know they were indicted, and I know they wanted to indict Cadillac. You know, this was everybody in the prison knew about this. It's not something that was. Uh, Everybody talked about it. It was known. Okay. Um, and so my point being that uh, Cadillac was also known as a booty band. Okay. From the time that he was in Lord and Youth Center, people have his own people, his own homeboys have talked about how he used to knock people out and fuck them. That's what he used to do, you know? And uh, so it always made me question like, how this guy has uh, got such a, a great reputation among all these uh, white Washington, D.C. prisoners. I mean, he's a sex offender, you know, and they all know that. I mean, they grew up with the guy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, he's the difference between Cadillac and Steamboat is that Cadillac never raped no white dudes. You know, he's not known for that. He was known for raping his own people, you know. And uh, I remember one time he knocked out Philly Dog and took his weed from him. And uh, dude asked him, Philly Dog said, uh, did he rape you? And Philly said, no, he didn't rape me. He said, well, you're lucky because that's what he usually does. You know, that's what he's known for. And so you got away easy is what he told to do, right? Let me anyway. stop. Let me stop you for a minute because you know a lot of people do get bent out of shape about this. You know, Cadillac getting killed, and how did he get killed? He was cuffed. You know, everyone has their own narrative, right? And like you said, sometimes hold on now. Sometimes and look, bro, I don't have a dog in the fight, right? Because some people do. Oh man, you're pushing that agenda because you're no, nah, bro. We're just we're taught. Look, you get a lot of DC dudes that come out. They tell their their story how how they believe things happen. You get white dudes that come out and say, hey, that's not really how it happened. It happened this way. And then DC dudes respond and say, no, it didn't happen that way. But you were around back then. And yeah, yeah. Cadillac did. Cadillac did stab back. Who'd he stab? He stabbed back. He, did he stab Clay? I think he stabbed Clay, yeah. He had his own knife with him. You know, It's a known fact, man. Everybody, in, in Pete Early's book, Pete took his, uh, actually, he commented on my channel about uh, if anybody wants to know the what he what he actually where he got his information from he got his information from the courts from uh, you know the the actual investigation the entire thing is like he 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 dug deep into finding out exactly what the facts were and I yeah, interviewed, that, look I interviewed Pete early on my channel Pete's I, I mean Pete was you know he was close with Silverstein he was in the prison. He pulled up the, like you said, the investigative reports, the reports that, you know, people that were there, prisoners that were witnesses that maybe not have testified, but they did write some reports and they said that Cadillac was not cuffed, correct? 
He was not cuffed. He was walking to the shower. There was no reason to cuff him. They were locked in a cage, but nobody knew that the cage that they had already sawed out of it, that, that there was just a, a like a like it was just being held there by like a like a very little thing, you know, like that they had set it up so that all they had to do was touch it and it would fall apart. And they'd been working on it for a month. So they had no reason to cuff him going to the shower. And he was already, you know, they were locked in the cage. Uh, everybody was locked in his cell. They let him out to walk down to the shower by himself. And he was talking to one of his homeboys when he heard the boom, come, when they heard him kick out the, the screen and turned around and they were heading for his way in full force, you know. And uh, my understanding is that, uh, you know, they killed him uh, and that he, uh, somebody, it was either, maybe it was, I don't know if it's uh, Cadillac who stabbed Clay or if it was uh, uh, Tommy who accidentally stabbed Clay. I don't remember, you know, but Clay got stabbed. That's the only thing I remember. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, he wasn't, he definitely was not cuffed. Anybody who says he was just doesn't understand the whole situation at all, you know. Maybe that's the narrative because I mean that's I mean hey look that's their guy that's the dude that you know a lot of and, and not in a disrespectful way a lot of them dudes you know look up to that dude like he was that dude he was knocking people out he was the DC shot caller you know they say they don't have a shot caller but in your perspective you've been on the compound with him was he the shot caller for DC back then um, yeah he was you know and listen like I, I'm not going to say there's a lot of good DC dudes man. Uh, I know Naughty was good people, man. Uh, 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 punchy, Punchy was good people. Um, uh, who else? Uh, geez, uh, there's a bunch of. Uh, Bro, I've been down. around. Listen, I've been around a lot of good DC dudes, man. I mean, hey, there's good and, and bad, no matter where you're from. You know what I mean? Like Ian Williams, bandits. and there's white booty bandits too, man. Puppet was a fucking booty bandit, you know. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, that uh, the white guys weren't scumbags. You know, they were some scumbags. Trust me, they were all scumbags, you know. I mean, uh, I'm just saying, in that world where we came from, you know, you don't want to let somebody walk around bragging about raping a white dude. You know, that's how, that's how, uh, uh, what's his name got murdered? Uh, um, Steamboat, that's how he got murdered, running his fucking mouth. Uh, talk about he, listen. We're gonna let me stop you. We're gonna talk about Steamboat in a minute. I don't want to get off track though. I want to kind of keep you in, in this lane. You know they 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 end up killing Cadillac right in prison murders. I may have asked you this before. Um, you actually killed someone in prison when you went on that mission. In your mind, were you like, "Yo, I'm about to, I'm, I'm killing this dude," or were you like, "Hey, look, we accidentally killed him." I was killing him, yeah. yeah. I want to kill him, huh? We're going on a mission to kill this cat. Yeah, you go on a mission to kill somebody. You don't go to just stab them up. I mean, I mean, somebody else might think like that, but I didn't. And I don't know too many people that did. You know? You're going on a robbery. Aren't you going to rob this cat? What, what do you end up stabbing him for? Yeah, right. Exactly. What, it was I a mean, robbery? No, no, it wasn't a robbery. It was a... Uh, it was in uh, retaliation for a fist fight that he had with my co-defendant and uh, because of uh, some things that he had said about my co-defendant selling them bad drugs and, uh, and also because we believed that he was going around robbing everybody's lockers. You know, all the white guys got their lockers hit one afternoon and we thought that it, he was one of those guys that was involved in that. Yeah. So these small things, right? These small things in this prison environment cost this dude his life, right? Yeah. Mike ever think, damn, exactly. we're about to go kill this dude. I'm never going to get out. Does that ever enter Mike's mind? Probably not because I already had so much time. I didn't think I was getting out anyway, you know? But yeah, you know what? That was a bad that was a bad call on my part, you know. 
I fucked up. You you regret that decision, right, Mike? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. To bother you now, all these years later, you sleep at night. Does it ever pop in your mind? Yeah, sure does. Does it haunt you? Yeah. It does. It does. Something I can I see it bothers you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, dude. I always promised myself I wouldn't kill anybody unless, uh, you know, it was absolutely necessary. I can't, uh, I can't justify that as being an absolutely necessary thing. I can't do that. You talked about what was it, Steamboat? I don't. I'm really not familiar with this guy, but you talked about him a little bit, right? Right. So Steamboat raked two dudes in Leavenworth. He started with uh, I don't even remember their names. I he raked a dude in general population that got him locked up and put in a hole. He put him in a hole with another white guy. He raped that guy, and that's why they sent him to Marion Control Unit. While he was in a control unit, he used to have to sign a rec sheet to come out with a different person so that you could rec together. He signs this rec sheet with a black dude. They come out together. He tries to sex pressure the guy. The guy gets upset. He gets a piece of steel and he stabs him. Steamboat starts screaming. Cops come. They talk the guy into putting the knife down. Apparently, he didn't have a very good weapon. You know, I, I, I don't know what he used, but, you know, they took Steamboat to the hospital, patched him up, brought him right back. He signs in on wreck with another guy, another black guy. Okay? Same thing happens. They come out for recreation. He tries to sex pressure the guy. The guy gets some kind of a piece of steel, not a very good piece, and he does the same thing that the first guy did. Stabs him. Steamboat. Steamboat screams. And uh, the cops come again, talk the guy into putting a knife down, right? <laughs> gets away with it again. The two white boys come out. They're like, nah, we ain't getting, he ain't going to get away with this one. You know what I mean? They had their shit strapped to their wrists. They had lanyards. You know what a lanyard is. So it's tied around their wrists so they can't drop the knife. There's two of them. There's one of him. He comes out. He's pulling his fucking sweatpants on. He's the door. Hold on. I'm putting my pants on. He's pulling his fucking pants on. And they start working on him. And it's beautiful. I mean, it's ridiculously, I mean, it was probably the best murder I've ever seen in my life. It was so, he so deserved this fucking killing, man, you know. And uh, they chased him around the fucking weight machine. He ran this way. Clay would hit him. He ran the other way. And uh, baby Huey would stab him. And it just got to the point where all all he could see was the fucking, the food hatch on the door uh, where you put the trays through. And he ran up to that and he stuck his head there. Apparently he thought he could squeeze his head and his whole body through, which is obviously not a possibility because it was only this big. But when you're, you know, in the, in the state of mind that he was in and when he was being murdered, you know, you know, he thought uh, that was the only way he could see out of that uh, situation. And that's where they left him. They left him at that door. And not only did they leave him at the door, they uh, they went to work on him, like, while he was dead. Like, the guy from, uh, where is it? Uh, I think he was, uh, oh, many, many times. They just, over, they, like, 60 times they stabbed this dude. Like, while he was dead, they were still stabbing him. You know? Talking about Troy Kell. That's who I'm talking about. Yeah, just like Troy Kell, you know. Uh, so after this dude's dead, they just this motherfucker did not come back again. You know, uh, you said Clay was that Clay? Uh, who, what Clay was that? Fountain. Yeah, Clay Fountain. Absolutely, Clay Fountain. That was Clay's first murder, and he loved that. He loved it. 
Did they exactly. end up? Did they end up charging Clay with that? Yeah, yeah, they gave him ten years. Ten years for killing for killing someone in federal prison. Well, I mean, they brought up his history. They brought up, uh, I mean, uh, Steamboat's history for the sexual assaults and everything, you know. And this was a trial. They they couldn't. Uh, they didn't convict. They convicted him of like. Uh, manslaughter or something they couldn't convict him of first degree murder and where was uh steamboat was from dc yes definitely he was from dc and here's the thing a whole lot of his fucking homeboys were glad to see him done one of the black dudes like man he tried to rape a couple black dudes right there in a unit in months just previous to this you think they weren't they you think they weren't happy to see him get murdered fuck yeah they wanted to see him die you know? a dude was he He's a piece of shit. He ran his mouth all the time. He was How big was he? Was he a big dude? 5'8", 194. It was on his, uh, it was on his, uh, his, uh, was it 194 or 198? It was on his uh, autopsy report. He was like 5'8", 194, something like that. You trying to fight back at first? He's a chunky dude, you know. He's a chunky dude, but, uh, you know, that's pretty big for a 5'8". Five, five, Trying to fight back a little bit? No, no, he didn't fight. He just ran. He just ran. Same thing he did the other two times. Screamed and ran. <laughs> yeah. Baby Huey, how much time did he have? Ah, shit, I don't know. I don't remember. I know he got 10 years for that, you know. Baby Huey got out, what the fuck, about 10 years ago. He did 36 and a half years and he died of brain cancer about four years ago. Up in, uh, he, met, he met a girl up in Minnesota. He married her while he was in prison. She stuck with him for about 13 years and then he got out and uh, lived with her until he passed away. So that night, old Steamboat dies. How were you feeling? Oh, man. Excited, happy, you know. Uh, the unit manager came around <laughs> as he, his job every every afternoon at lunchtime was to come around to make the rounds, talk to everybody, and see if anybody had any issues. He's a captain. He's a captain. I forgot his name now. Guy's been fifty years, right? Um, when he got to my cell. I looked at him and he was affected by this fucking murder. He watched it. He seen it. It was horrible. <laughs> you know, I mean, to him, it was horrible. I mean, he, you could see how affected he was. He was ashen gray. He could barely talk. You know, uh, his attention was like not focused. You know what I mean? He was unfocused. It was like, you could just tell, man, that, uh, you know, he had, uh, he had issues with what he had just witnessed. That stuff affects people, man. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. I mean, when you look at someone that's a piece of shit and they get butchered, it's like, so what? But to normal people in, in, in regular society, they would be like, oh, hell no. No matter who it was to see something like that, it's gruesome. But prison yeah. calluses people. It turns you know your heart into a black heart at times. I mean, obviously, I can see that you're affected by the murder that you committed. And, and, and yeah, you talk yeah. about, hey, you know, it does bother me. But then when you talk about Steamboat, it doesn't bother you at all. No. Yeah. 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 How old are you now, Mike? 70. 70 years old, man. Been through a lot, seen a lot. You know, I asked you before about, you know, your biggest regrets. And, you know, I think that shit resonated with other people. It, it hit home, you know. You spent mm -hmm. your whole life in prison almost, right? Yeah. Yeah, 30 years. I actually met with you in person, so I got to meet you in person. You're a pretty big dude. Um, and you are the person that took me into uh, into Philly, right? Yeah, yeah. What did you think of that? That's crazy, ain't it? I mean, I've never in my life would have ever imagined that there would be syringes, all, and not just one or two, just numerous syringes, people actively using. You know, it just it was just 
That on the street with people driving by, was there people shooting dope with, while, while traffic is going by right on the fucking street? There with the and cops I'm, standing there. It was it was shocking to say the least to even to be down there to you know, to see what was going on in the United States, something like that, bro. It's the same way in this. Uh, I think it's the same way in certain places like L.A. There's a big homeless population and, and down in the uh, in the what he called a uh, um, row. I went down there after I went to Kensington with you. I ended up going to Skid Row a couple months to, later just to kind of see. Huh? You've been to Skid Row in L.A.? I went there after I went to Kensington because I had to compare the two. Did you see the same thing there? I did, and I, I don't think it was – man, it's it's hard to explain. I think Skid Row was a little more dangerous, that people were less accepting. And Skid Row was kind of like people were watching you. I, I mean, in, in Kensington with you, people were kind of watching me. Um, yeah. In Skid Row, they were actually making comments. And they said, man, don't, don't bring your white ass back here tonight. Um, we had someone else tell us that they were going to blow our heads off. A chick was like, what you doing down here? We'll blow your head off. It was a chick. I thought it was a dude. Um, but – uh. You know, it was, it was definitely, was I think there was, Kensington? Oh, that was, that was in Skid Row. In Kensington, oh, okay. it was more, you know, drugs yeah. all over the place, people just watching you. In Skid Row, they were actually making comments. Um, oh, okay. But anyway, man, you're out now, you're free. You know, the things that you've seen, the things that you've been through, you know, it affects people. Like how you said that, like that murder didn't really affect you, seeing Steamboat get killed. I've seen murders in prison that later on in life. I want to say that they didn't affect me after I seen a few people, you know, stabbed, another dude killed. Then you see it again. It, I felt like, man, it started not to affect me, but maybe it really does. But it didn't affect me the way that going through Kensington Skid Row affected me, even though there weren't dead people, just to see the syringes. and watch, I mean, all over the place and watching kids walk to school, that affected me in a different way than watching somebody get murdered in prison. I don't understand, that I don't understand, how the people that live there – put up with that i guess they just don't have the the uh the money to move out of that neighborhood or something because i i wouldn't want my kid walking to school uh past drug dealers i'd have some problems with that you know but they don't they don't seem to want to just come out and force and run these fuckers off the street corner at least stop selling drugs when the kids are going back and forth to school you know uh, Look, man, we live in a day and time where there's no respect. It's not the way that it used to be. You know, certain areas, it's just a lawless land. I don't I don't care if you're in New York City and the people are beating the shit out of the immigrant dudes are beating the shit out of the cops, people going in the mall, stealing everything, people blatantly killing people and putting it on Instagram, um, right. killing people with, with, with cameras out on the, on the street lights. Like, no one cares, bro. Like, you're on camera and you're killing people. People don't even care anymore. It's a different world, my friend. I know. Yeah. Hey, Mike, man, I appreciate you coming on. We talked a little bit about Fly. We talked about Steamboat. We talked about Cadillac. I mean, you happened to be around back then. And, and, and you know, look, some people don't want to hear that part, that he wasn't handcuffed. Whether he was or not, I wasn't there. But, I mean, if you're able to stab people back, then you probably weren't handcuffed because it would be pretty hard to stab someone from behind your back, right? Yeah, he was, he was not cuffed. There was 100%. I mean – it's it's been proven over and over, and it doesn't. It's, it's not even a question in my mind. I know he wasn't, you know. So I don't even know about these people that make these comments. I don't. I haven't even. I don't really pay that much attention to, you know. Like so far in my uh, in my uh, comments, I've never seen anybody say that about Cadillac. Well, listen, Mike, man, I definitely appreciate you coming on, man. We're going to make sure we put up your link. Felons Talk. Go check Mike out. He's one of them dudes that people tell stories about. He's one of them dudes that they actually talk about. But anyway, man, Blood on the Razor Wire TV. With respect, until tomorrow, we're out.